a lot of energy still. Okay, this one question. How many of you code? Or language? C plus plus. How many in Java? Your hands. Java. C plus plus. Anyone from Perl or Tickle? Tickle, sir? Python? How long you have been coding in Python? Two years. Two years. I'm very sorry to say this session is not for you actually. This session, no problem. <laughs> I have to set my expectations, like what you should be expecting from my session. This session is very basic. My aim is to make non-Python programmer familiar with it. Like the essence of Python is you program in certain other language. Program in certain another language. And when you come to Python, you migrate your course to Python, you'll see that many of the tasks can be achieved through much simpler lines, much small codes. Like we just saying, become a good programmer, you have to write a lot of codes. But the hallmark of a good programmer is writing very less code. Very less code, as short as for that. And Python is designed in such a way that it helps you reduce the size the maintenance. Every time we write a lot of lots of 100 and 100 lines of code, but after in the future, when we have to maintain it, when we have to pass it to our successor, someone, someone who is has to maintain it, someone has, someone has to do some upgradation, someone scales it up, then there's a problem. C, C++ still, it tops the chart when it comes to programming, but when it comes to more readable codes, when it comes to more user-friendly codes, yes, few scripting languages like we have Python, we have Python, we have Ruby. Those are pure natural English languages. So why Python? Python, <coughs> the essence of Python lies in its emphasis on readability. Its syntaxes, like in Python life is very easy without this. We say we, we do a lot of coding. We did in our college time. Everybody has started from Java somewhere. C, C++ or Java. So, braces, those braces, those somewhere we forget uh, three bracket open, but three bracket were not closed. We somewhere we get lost in our own, our own codes. So, Python has removed that thing. Python, the main, the coding standard of Python involves indentation. Indentation means each and every code has been separated with spaces. We use indentation as a, a doc files, right? So, that's the essence of Python. Some more reason why we use Python. In few other languages, what we do, to achieve a task, we write our own code. We, write, we define our own functions. We define our own, own small code snippets to achieve a task. But, Python has been in development since 1991. It has a huge community support, a huge, huge community support. You feel with anyone around the world, in any of the forum, you'll be getting a lot of reply. For one task that you'll be coding in C, C++, Java, you'll be having an inbuilt Python already there. So you need not write those lines, four or five lines to code. If I ask you, uh, mostly Java programmers, right? Mostly Java, C, C++ programmers. So if you have to print odd or uh, I'll give you a range from 1 to 100. Print all the prime numbers from 1 to 100. How many lines you can accomplish it in? 4, 5. Python can do it in two lines. Simply two lines. <coughs> Python is an interpreted language like in Java, C++, you have to compile from the uh, hash include istdio.h to the last line. But Python, it has an interactive shell. It doesn't compile the whole program at once. It goes line by line. You can see the output of each and every line what you want to. It's like Python helps you do hit and try. Somewhere you can fail, somewhere you can write good code. But while learning, maybe I don't know what's the output of this particular line. <coughs> So Python will be helping me in getting an instant on the, on the run result. So that's why I'm not coding it in a IDE, I'm not using a notepad, I'm using a command prompt to write a simple program. 
that is This part is a program. This could have been achieved in one single line. In this one single line. But since I'm running it in command prompt, so it's taking it as different. That's why it was giving it an indentation error. This is a filter function. Uh, I'll explain it to you uh, in a later slide. That these are the, this is a user defined function. This is a list. This ha it has created a list of integers. Integers, mainly prime number. Logic divided by 2 not equal to 0, divided by 3 not equal to 0, and return the number that are not divided by those numbers. So let me go through the slides. No, but the number Pardon? Oh. Sorry. Can I return to this one in a later slide? Yeah. Sure. How does Python consider what is strings and on? Anything beneath, in between a single quote, a double quote, or three quotations, six quotations, six quotes, it considers at as a string. Single quotes, Python, it's Python and Barcam. The difference between the first two and the last one is, in the first two, no matter how long string you type, how many new line characters you are using, it will be taking it as one single string. One single string without any new line. But the last one, you can do formatting over there. All the new line characters will be printed as it is. Strings, like everything, it has, it, it's indexed. Each and every characters of a strings are indexed. Starting from 0 to 1. Starting from the left hand side, it starts from 0 to, uh, to the last. And from the uh, reverse order, it starts from minus 1. You can manipulate anything. If you... In Python, you don't declare anything. A uh, very first and foremost thing, you can, you do not declare anything. Uh, you, you, you need not write, okay, this variable I am taking it as a string. In this variable, I am taking it as integer or float or anything. It, it's simple. Interpreter itself identifies the value you give to your variable. If it's a float value, if you give a decimal value, it considers it as float. If you give as a numerical value, it considers it as integer. Or if you give something within quotes, or then it will be considering it as a string.
you see when i give the index 0 it gives is it, it returns me the first the first element of that bar cam the variable i have assigned i needn't assign it as x x is a uh, string i didn't i need not assign that the interpreter itself identifies okay this is a string it has been written inside a quotes if i have to slice it slicing operation i It took the second index and it went up to minus 2. That's why it printed RCA. It, it trimmed off the first uh, 0, 1. It started from second it, and it went to minus 2. Minus three. Okay, from last, uh, I mean, from yeah. the last year. Yeah. There can be also operations like if we, we have a long string, we have to search something. We can simply we have a normal in operator. We write it as. It returns me as true. It's a Boolean operator. Whatever operations we have been doing in Java and C, C++ with arrays, everything can be done with strings, provided Python consider the whole string as an indexed array, a whole indexed array. But the only difference in strings and in uh, uh, an array in Java or C++ is we can manipulate the items. We can delete one item, we can insert any item, but strings in Python are immutable. They cannot be changed. Whatever operations you do, that, that can be reflected on the front end, but when you again type the same string that you took initially, it will be the same. It will not be reflected. If I, like, If I assign a new character to the index position 1, it will be returning me an error. It, will, it, it doesn't support the manipulation, it, depends, it doesn't support the alteration of a string. That's why it is, uh, they, they say that strings are immutable. But when, you, when we come to a different, uh, it's a data structure. We have list, we have, in place of arrays we have list, we have tuples, we have sets, we have dictionaries in Python. We don't have arrays, we have list. It's, it's, it's basically an array itself, but it's very flexible. In Java, we, in, in Java or C++, we'll be having uniform element arrays. If it will be characters or we can, we can have uh, uh, integer values. But in this, we can have anything. Anything, a single list can comprise of integers, single list can comprise of uh, float values, character values, uh, string values, anything. And the advantage is we have a lot of inbuilt functions that can do our processing. Python mainly, if you use any data structure, if you use any data structure for manipulating our data, it will be mainly either list or dictionary. I'll be coming to dictionary. Dictionary is nothing but a hash table. Either we declare a list as a square bracket, ls is equal to square, or list function we use, and we say that, okay, a will be considered as a list. 
ओके लेट मी it has all the characters it has strings it has integers it has float values unlike unlike string where we were not able to change one particular item which in where we were not able to alter one particular items here we can attempt to alter them if i have in the zeroth position i have a if i want to reassign a new character if i want to re reassign a new value i can straight away just assign it the change will be reflected in the final result list is mutable that can be changed and that's why most of the processing most of the uh, most of the alteration if we have to manipulate a data we have to process a data we mainly use list we have whole lot of functions for list we can a uh, list can be used as stacks list can be used as as queue a uh, stacks the first the last goes in it comes out first right so if i want to pop it up the last item but if we have to implement the same thing as queue then we'll have to do a bit of modification this is also a list this is also a list but the thing is i have used an external module a third party module like i said in python we have a lot and lot of built in functions a lot of built in libraries which helps us achieve something like you said in stacks we pop out only the first in the last in we pop out uh, pop out first but in queue if you want to implement a queue implementation then we'll be using this dq what it does if i want to pop it out uh the leftmost item i can use this thing it popped out the leftmost, the leftmost item that uh, this is the implementation of a uh, queue so like this uh but again if you have to append anything it will be appended at the last of the list at the last like this we have whole lot of bunch bunch of functions if you want if we have a huge text file and if you want to uh, count how many times one particular word occurs in it we can straight away copy the whole file in one list it will be a very big list and we can have this function on it like i have ls we have this list i'll duplicate one item this function just whatever value i supply it looks up into the list and it returns me the count how many times it occurred in that list i type for b there were three b's it returned me the count so this function 
this small function can be very useful. If I'm trying to search out for the count of various words, one particular very uh, uh, critical words in a whole data file, I can do that. I can import the whole text file into the list and then, then that uh, operation can be done. Likewise, we have sort, we have reverse, we have insert. In a particular position, if I want to insert it, I have to give the index value first and then the item. Insert, reverse, and everything. What was the range? Range. Oh, sorry. When we come to iteration, when we come to iteration, uh, like you use for loop in Java. How you use i is equal to zero, i less than something. You give a value from where to where. You have to iterate. Range is nothing but it gives you the whole numerical values from where to where you have to go. If I want to iterate something till ten. Range 9 will be giving you 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 10 line. So that range mainly is useful for iteration in for loops. Like I say 9. I'm sorry. It gave me the first 9 values starting from 0. So now if I have to write a for loop, I'll, be, I'll not be using i less than 10 or something for a variable in a sequence. Sequence can be this. Using list, these three are very useful functions. I don't know why I'm getting filter wrong, but let me try once again. I'll not kill your time. Dictionaries. Uh, one of the very useful data structure for all the lookups, all the search that we do on a huge data. Huge data that may be, that may be in the tune of magnitude of uh, 10 GB or something. Large data that we do up. Dictionaries may be considered as a list a type of a list which has sing each element has a key and a value. Each element has a key and value. You search elements using keys. You don't search, uh, you write one particular thing and search. It has keys and values like dic uh, dictionary, we declare it as curly braces. It's continuous curly braces and it has the first value that I will be giving, it will be a key. And the next value will be, the next item will be the value for that key. Each pair can be separated by a comma. First, A will be a key and the bar camp will be value. Again, B will be key and uh, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 will be a value. So, in this, the lookup becomes very easy. The search will become very easy. Like if I have to print what does dict has, it has this thing. I can separately only the keys or same way if I have to print only the values, I can print only the values. Uh, control structure. Those are very different as compared to Java or C, C++. In 
if it would have been java i would have written the for statement as for i equal to 0 i less than something and then i plus plus but in python the for loop is very different if else will be largely same if i have to write if else if else then uh, if uh, condition then a statement then else then a condition then a statement that's it but when it comes to for loop for will be uh, for will be something like for a variable any variable in uh, i had a list right yes for i ls I took the whole ls as its structure, it iterated over each, I took the value as first 0, it printed 1, it will be taking only the max, the length of the list, whatever will be, will be the length of that particular item or the structure, whatever it is, that ls, it will be taking that, that many times of iteration. If, like this, uh, yeah. we have a feedback session at 5.30, uh, we'll be, we'd love to hear what you like about back end what you didn't like and there's a special from Ola Caps as well. So please feel free to join us and then. If state statement have the same syntax, why has the same, but when it comes to for, it will be a bit different. If I have to, we have in for, we use a lot of range function, range and length. Why we use range is, I'll show you something. The first, it has two functions actually. It has one length function, it has range function. Length, it gave me the length of my data structure, the list, that is uh, five, uh, six, oh, sorry. The length of the structure and then range, range six, whatever the values it will be. Now, if I have to iterate over this, if I had just have to iterate over th uh, that particular item, I'll be writing this thing to iterate six times. There may be cases where I cannot use only range 6. There may be a list, there may be a, some data items which I have to inter, in, uh, iterate only over its indexes. Then I use range and length. Like, or, like this. It just gave me in the indexes. Many times when I have to just iterate over its indexes and get some particular values, I'll be using range and length together. Can you get both? Pardon? Can you get both? Both means? Can you change both? Can the values, can the values, yep. Yeah. There may be tweaking ways where we can use for loop along with range and length, uh, length functions. A simple comparison of what we'll be writing, what, what we'll be using in a C and what we'll be using in Python. How much optimized can we write? How much time we can save for ourselves and how much small the code can be and readable plus. Every, uh, every function, every method or any, every user defined function, Python will be interpreting it as a method or a function only if its name ends with a colon. It's a for, it's a method. It will be, it has to end with a, a colon. If, if a main function, it will have to end with a, if I show you in ideally. Something like a 
in any language, when you open a bro brace, yeah. uh -huh. so you can substitute that. If I don't put a colon sign, see the way cursor goes. Cursor went to the uh, to the beginning, but since Python uh, identifies every bit of quotes using indentation, I have to give colon to make it identify. Okay, whatever lines now I write, it will be inside main function. That's right. The last part is file handling. Uh, a very basic file object f is equal to open Open is the function and f will be its uh, file object. Whatever I write here, either I can write w, either I can write r, either it will be giving me the permissions. If it's, if, if it's just r, it will be a read-only read file. If I give w, it can read and write both. I'll be... Once this command is executed, one test file, one file with the name text file, it will be generated in whichever directory you are, or if you want to generate in some particular uh, directory, you have to give the whole path over there instead of name, and the permissions, what you want to give to that file. Once that is done, a file will be opened. At the, ba at the background, one file will be open, and now you can perform whatever write functions you want to perform. F dot write. <coughs> But it's, it's very important to close any file that you open because it will affect uh, whatever write function I'll be doing. It will be all the functions will be including in that text file only. So if if, we, if I'm handling with multiple files, it's very important. If we, I open one file, I have to close it. I will I have to close it every time I complete my write functions. So now if I have to read what I wrote, if just to show that this text file is somewhere here. Created. Three type, two types of uh, functions basically associated with file uh, text handling. Uh, file handling, sorry. It will be a read or read line. Read will be reading the. Sorry, I have to open. Again, it's a uh, permission that I'm giving to file. I want to read it. After closing, I want to read it. That's why. It is R, right? What is this R plus? I'll be opening it for reading and writing both. W was just for write. That's why it was not op opening that time. So if you want to open for R plus, uh, read and write, you have to give it as R, R plus. plus. W, right? yeah. R plus? Only R plus. Yeah, only R plus it will work. That's for a friend thing, is it? No, no. It's for read and write both.
file by default it's for text file for creating a text file if you want to work with doc or pdf you'll be having you'll be have to import an external modules that support that by default just a text file but creating is creating a text file there because extension is not the same if it is a text file then you can open it with notepad directly i mean the icon is not so i think you have to use dot text and write it dot text W just it allowed me to write on the file, and R allowed me to read and write both. Uh, just read the file. I forgot the permission, uh, the parameter which allows me to read and write simultaneously. Okay. No, it was not R plus. It's not R plus W. It's either W R. Yeah. It's not R plus W, but we have W. No, no, only read and write. There is only two. We have R plus. Okay. Okay. You can take it offline. You can. I think this session has been dragged for a long time. Uh, thanks. That was it. There were some glitches. Sorry for that. You have some questions. Uh, who do you take input? From a user, right? Yes. You will have a variable. You have this function. And you have your message. But, pardon? Only one function for that? Yeah, raw input, raw underscore input. But by default, it takes, by default, it takes only strings. If you have to enter a integer value, then you'll have to explicitly, like you typecast in Java and C++, right? Into Java. You, you'll have to use that. Each It's accepted. But if I use this thing, enter your name, and if I enter uh, uh, integer value, it will accept. But when you manipulate that thing, if, if I use, uh, see what type it is. I enter 12, right? Type of the variable that I have uh, used this. Thing. It's string. It's not uh, integer. By default, raw input always takes only uh, string. Pardon? When you print it, it print what? Yeah, in quotes. In quotes, it will be printing it. Yep. Filter, it, what it does, I have a range of functions. Uh, I have a list, a big list. And if I want to, ma if I want to filter few items from that uh, big list, according to something, according to a convention, I was trying to filter it the only the prime numbers. I was just trying, uh, trying to filter only the prime numbers from the, those 20 or 30 uh, values. Filter will be use, uh, filter will be helping me do that. Filter does that. Uh, it, it, it mainly operates just in list. And dictionary, no. In dictionary, it doesn't operate. There was a map function mentioned there. Map function, again, filter, it, it took out, it, it took out few uh, items that satisfied one particular condition map function will be mapping the function that you identify on each element of those list whatever if the element has 100 list 
if you want to map one particular function in each and every items, it will mapping it. If you have to skew each and every item of the list, you'll have to map it. Map will do that. Basically, uh, where do you use that map function? It depends on the context, what you're using, you, what you have, what you have in your hand. In like, you have to write a, a big chunk of code which says um, you have already have few uh, names. You want to con concatenate each name with something using some prefix and one suffix. You have to implement that in each and every name that is present in the list. You can use map. You can you you can con concatenate it, right? Two names. Strings can be concatenated with a plus operator. That's it. Map will be you he helpful in that. And there is one again. Reduce function was there. Reduce function. I have a list. I what I want. I want the addition. It will perform the addition on the first two items. If I have one, two, three, four, five, six, the first two perform. It will add it. And then what the sum will be? It will add it again to the third one. Like this. Subsequent. It will reduce the whole particular list to one particular item. Just one value according to what conditions you give. Okay. Anything else? Thanks. Thank you.